He's defeated on both on the yeah. level. Okay, yeah. cool. Ooh! Okay. Mm. I think it's good. Mm. It doesn't. Bow work never, ever, ever, ever ends. Everything that happened to that engine, we've got to do it to this one. So, here goes. Welcome to Sating Lady Africa. I'm Ricky, and this is my wife Simone. After two years of hard work on our boat, she's finally ready to take us from South Africa across the Atlantic to the Bahamas. Be sure to join in our adventures by subscribing down below. While we are in South Africa, a lot of sailors recommended we get our sails replaced here due to the cost difference between here and the Caribbean. So what we're up to right now, Morgan's here from Almond Sails and he's doing all the measurements for our sails so that they can send it out to the designers and they can design us hopefully a more efficient sail for our kind of boat. The sails are 10 years old so hopefully we'll get a little bit of a better sail shape and that will hopefully help a little bit with the performance. All our sails are bagged up, ready to get to go. And um, the main, we need the, the whole foot of the sail cut shorter because of the bimini that we made. We weren't getting any, luff ten uh, any leech tension. And the luff tension was also really weak. So they're gonna shorten the sail slightly, about 200 mils off roughly. And then on the leech, we're gonna take quite a bit more. So it sits a little bit higher off the solar panels. And then, they're gonna give us a price on a new Genoa, or otherwise um, a price to fix the one that we have. But um, they, they're gonna give it to a designer and he's gonna see how can they improve the design. And if they can improve it, that might be something for us to consider that we're gonna get better performance, gonna be a new sale. So we're gonna get good four or five years of good cruising out of it, as opposed to having a sale that's already got a few years on it. So yeah, that's the thought process. And our inner jib, they say they can do a much better job than, than the existing one that we have there. Fly a slightly lighter cloth, uh, newer material, and um, it would suit the, the track type system a lot better than what, than what the original one was actually built for a normal, um, like a car type pulley system on either side. So yeah, that's where we're at with the sails. So let's get these loaded up and get them out of here. While being stuck in lockdown, we really put our cooking and baking skills to the taste. I've been spring cleaning and making sure everything's nice and squeaky clean. And guess what Ricky's been doing? He's been making us... Baking a loaf. Some bread. So it's an olive bread with the recipe that I got online. And I kind of butchered it just a little bit. The recipe. Hopefully it will be cooked. There was olives here, but... They've gone missing in action in the testing process. That sounds bloody hard. Mm. Doesn't look cooked. No, I think it's good. Gotta put butter on it. This is like that heavy bread. What's the name of that stuff? Oh! Hey? Mm. You think it's good? Mm. With some butter. Mm. It really came out better than my cappuccino cake. I don't know why the what's the name so heavy though. The crust. Maybe that's how the recipe's supposed to be. I love the olives in it. There's a bit of olives in there, there's a bit of garlic in there, very little garlic, but a little bit. That's pretty good. Cut me a slice so I can put some butter on it. My mom always said it's okay to gain weight as long as you do it together. So Ricky's busy securing our solar panels. Um, we didn't do the back of the solar panel because we couldn't reach it, but now being here, we're able to do that. And so we got rid of our ugly green straps over there. So now it looks all pretty again. So boat works never ends. It doesn't. Boat work never, ever, ever, ever ends. <laughs> what we gotta do is our 50 hour service to the engines so we need to do uh, engine service that's oil filter oil uh, empty the diesel filters to check if we have water from there 
uh, check belt tensions, check engine mounts, check everything. We're just going to do a full check on everything. Um, actually, just before we started filming this, I did check some of the hoses and I did find one was leaking. So one of the exhaust hoses were leaking slightly and had a little drip in the engine bay. So tighten that up already, but we're going to go over some of the other checks that I did and show you guys. And if you guys have an engine similar, all these diesel engines run pretty much exactly the same and the surfaces are really easy. So what we're going on here, there's our engine, 27 horsepower Vitus engine, um, empty canister where I like using a clear one so that I can see how the oil comes out, a little suction pump thing that came with our engines from Vitus, that's a little cup so that I can pour into there when we do our diesel filters, diesel filters we have one over here and we have one on the back here. So what I do is I just drain the bottom of them, I'll show you now how that looks, and we take a sample of that diesel and if there's water it will come out first and diesel will remain on top. And then replace the oil filter, which is this little guy down the side here. So replace the oil filter right over there. And you can see that's still the original one. It's done 50 hours now. I'm gonna take it off, replace the oil, do the gearbox oil change. So there, we've got to change the oil. So there's a drain on the side there. Check the belt tensions. These engines originally come with belt covers here. I don't like them on, and it's for the simple reason that I can keep on looking at them check a quick look i can see if the belt's loose or anything else tighten up here important thing with these alternators if nobody knows that's where you tension the belt but you always got to make sure that the swivel point is nice and tight otherwise this twists and it causes a lot of belt wear especially on these v belts so if you didn't know that might be a little pointer to you water pumps on that side right down here but i'm not going to worry about that because it's still in good shape and the flow rate is still very good. But in a year from now also, we will change, or otherwise 500 hours from now, we'll change that that impeller that's in there. So step number one, cut the engine, warm up the engines, stick it into drive, uh, circulate oil uh, in the gearbox, and then we're gonna pump out that gearbox oil first, check how that looks, and then we'll pump out the engine oil. I've already warmed up the engines for today, so I'm not too concerned about warming up the engines, and what you're doing that for is hotter oil will flow a lot easier so the viscosity decreases and becomes thinner and then it flows much easier especially on the suction pumps if it's warm oil it flows super easily so yeah that's what we do it for so we're gonna warm it up stick it in gear and not only that it also helps if there's any particles especially in the gearbox that will mix up with everything and then we can suck that out instead of it being right at the bottom and having settled some of these screws do have a magnetic base, so if you haul the boat out on the gearbox and then the screw that goes in has a magnet, magnet on it, it catches all those particles which is fantastic but we're not hauled out and we're doing an oil change on the gearbox while we're in water. That might be a tip to you. Okay, so engine's warmed up, gearbox has been circulated and warmed up the oil a little bit and now we're going to open the gearbox, use this pump, suck the oil out into there, check how it looks and then refill the gearbox and that will be the gearbox service done. While Ricky's pumping out the oil, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell to alert you every time we upload a new episode and give this video a like. It's a free way you can support our channel. I managed to empty out the entire content of the gearbox and it's 3.4 liters I know that I have to have that uh, for this particular gearbox and the oil looks good it's not milky so we're good there but one thing I might actually go and invest in I used to have a long suction pump and they work fantastic for these kind of engines and applications and it's much faster than doing this considering we only have to change the engine oil every 100 hours and the gearbox oil every 250 hours is it really worth it? For the gearbox, I had to make a little adaption pipe that I just made quickly with a couple of spares that I had here. And it worked pretty fine. It's not great, but it worked. It did the job. So I might change that to just make the gearbox changes faster. So that's a special little attachment hose. that fits onto the gearbox. It actually comes supplied from the manufacturer. Put a piece of clear hose to adapt it to another stainless steel fitting, to adapt it to a piece of hose, and then to adapt it to my suction hose every last little bit of oil out of there and that's a good thing 
and I don't see any funny colors so I'm happy with that. What you'd be looking for would be like a milky type oil and that would indicate that you have water in your gearbox. Uh, possibly one of your oil seals have failed, maybe the shaft seal. Some fishing line gets caught around there, the shaft seal goes or just age and then it leaks and then you get water into there. And obviously the water would be at the bottom and not up top so that last little bit that you suck out, that would be where it's most likely to be. But if you ran your engine and you had the, the gear in, it would actually cycle that oil. So the whole gearbox would actually be this milky white color. As you can see, this looks pretty good. Use the oil. No funky stuff. I could drop a magnet and, and check for, for steel particles and I'll probably do that. Otherwise, I could just take a sample and just send it to the lab and let them have a look at it. Sometimes it'll be easy to access a lab for, for testing. Like if you're in the States or you yeah, in South Africa, you can send there's a couple of oil testing labs and stuff. You can just send it to them. Obviously, that's going to cost you a bit of money. But since it's the first test and the break-in period might be worth it. The gearbox's old oil is out and now we can replace it with new oil. Our gearbox and engine take the same oil, which is pretty nifty. So yesterday I gave up a little bit because of those little pumps. They went great. I went this morning to one of the auto parts stores. I got one of these. This is $20. It's a little vacuum pump to suck the oil out. And this, sh and it's nice and compact, really small. I can just plug it into my battery and use it for my oil changes. It's really going to make it much easier to change, especially with the engine being a little bit more confined than usual. But yeah, so that's what I got, and we're going to test this out and see how it goes. So now we take the dipstick out. So procedure is oil out, loosen the oil filter, take it off, prime the next oil filter get it back on and then fill it up with clean oil. Oh, that's perfect, it's not bad at all. I did suck some out yesterday, so that would be the reason why it's a little bit lower than usual. And also, there would be a lot of oil in the head at the moment because the engine just finished running, so we also wanna maybe give it a few seconds at the end to allow that oil to go down into the sump before we suck the rest out. So The one downside of having the oil filter mounted on the side of the engine like that is that it does make a mess when it comes out and it sucks. When you're under warranty, you always want to try and keep with the same filter as the OEM specifies and after that then you go to more aftermarket ones if you can't get the originals or whatever the case may be. Yeah, that was an easy little cleanup. Done. New filter, just dip finger in the oil. We just want to get the seal lubed up so that the seal doesn't twist. Now, if you want to take the time, you can prime this filter and then slowly turn it that it goes into the membrane, doesn't stay in the middle, but you also have a chance that it is going to leak and it's going to mess around a little bit. But we'll prime this one. It will just delay, it will just speed up the time that when you start the engine for the oil to get everywhere because this won't have to fill for that long. But we're talking about couple of maybe a second or two you can feel the weight of the filter has actually gotten quite a bit heavier than what it was when it was empty and I can see now that the oil's coming out of there out of those holes and I know that the outer jacket's full if I fill up the inner jacket now when I turn it sideways it just mess everywhere so now that the outer jacket's full I'm happy with that and we can go and quickly screw it in hopefully not mess too much and perfect in I never like to tighten oil filters up too much. You really don't want to distort them or anything like that. So when I tighten it, I just give it a really tight hand tight. If I can get two hands on it and tighten it as much as I can with two hands, I would leave it at that. If I can't, I'd hand tighten it with one hand and then just give it a three quarter turn and then that's it. I used to spend a lot of my holidays was when my dad's uh, workshop was running. He's, he's got some earth moving equipment and trucks in that. I'd spend my holidays there servicing the machines doing hydraulic services, oil services, all of that kind of stuff. Spent a lot of time doing that and it was a good way for me to make pocket money. That's where I learned my basics about engines and working around them and that. So the filter's in, not too much of a mess. That's done. Now we just gotta to top up with oil. And now the engine's oil can be replaced. Yeah, at the bottom of the dipstick, 
Now I'll just give it about half a liter. We want to check the belt tension, so we just check here. So we want to check the bolt here and the bolt underneath there. This tension is nice and solid. And have a look at all the other hose fittings. Just check that everything, all these hose fittings, none of them are loose. We're just going to take a screwdriver to them quickly and make sure that everything is nice and tight. Double check the oil level again on the dipstick and then we're done. That red cable that's loose there, don't worry about that. That's for our buck boost charging system. So it's going to come from our alternator and it's going to feed up to our new lithium charging system. Let me do the last oil check, hopefully. And check where we're sitting at. One, two, three seconds. We're about three quarters. I like a little bit higher than that. Because I want to take it to the full mark. And the reason for that is we've got an oil filter that still needs to be filled. So now she's at the full mark. What we're going to do is run the engine, confirm it again. It's going to give it time to fill up that oil filter and we should be just below the full and that will be perfect. Okay, so we check our engine oil level again. Beautiful. Nice clean oil in there. Nothing funky going on. This is completely cold so we can check the levels here. Levels are perfect. That's our antifreeze cap. You never want to open this when it's hot. You'll get a serious surprise. Everything that happened to that engine, we've got to do it to this one. So, here goes. We did the same to the starboard engine as what we did on the port side. Now both our engines are serviced and in good standing. Ready for our trip to Namibia once lockdown is over. If you'd like to support our videos and join our Lady Africa family, you can do so by clicking on the links in our description below.